Hey everybody, um, uh, this uh, lesson is called the base E, and uh, E is actually a number that's used in higher mathematics a lot. So it's the same essential question. Instead of having B, it's now E, base E. Well, let's talk about base E, okay? So, so in your calculator, you guys, we're going to go ahead and plug these values in, okay? So, um, uh, so let's plug in 10 to the first right here. So 10 to the first is 1 over um, 10, so 1 over 10 is uh, 0 0.1, so 1 plus 0 0.1 is 1.1, okay, to the 10th, 1.1 to the 10th, if you plug that in your calculator, you get, you get that right there, okay, and then, um, uh, and then let's plug in 10 squared, 10 squared is 100, so this would be 100, 1 over 100 is 0 0.01, so 1.01 to the hundredth power, and we get uh, that right there. This is a thousand, so that would be 0 0.001. Okay, so this would be 1.001 to the thousands. Okay, this would be 10,000, 100,000, and a million right there. And if we did all of that, we should get those numbers right there. And what this happens is, is as uh, n approaches infinity, this number is approaching this guy right here, which is base e. Okay, so the natural base e, it's an irrational number, and it's defined as as n approaches infinity, this number approaches e right there. Okay, all right, so let's locate on your scientific calculators, you guys. So um, locate the feature e to the x, and it's it's above. I think it's above on most calculators. Your LN button and they might have done LN in lowercase or LN in capital letters right here and LN is always next to the log button okay so if it's in lowercase here it's in lowercase here if your calculator has an uppercase it's right there and it's right above okay so the e to the x is right above so so if we want to do say e to the one power you got to hit uh, some calculators you got to do uh, you got to do, uh, so it's a second function feature, so you hit second function, E, and then you hit 1. Or some calculators, you got to hit the 1 first and then second function, E to the X. So make sure you can do that on your calculator right there and get that number right there, okay? How about E to the 0? Well, anything to the 0 equals 1, okay? So you don't, I mean, you can punch it in your calculator, you'll see that it's 1. How about E squared? <clears throat> so let's see if you can get this, E squared. So make sure you can locate that feature because that, that's important to get, uh, be able to graph these so it should be about 7.389 and some change all right <clears throat> excuse me so let's graph this function right here so we'll graph um, f of x equals e to the x and we're going to use these points in this t-chart right here okay okay so let's plug in negative one so e to the negative one well that's uh, one over e to the positive one but if you used your exponent feature e to the negative one would give us a, a 0.367 so when x equals negative one is about 0.367 let's try x equals negative 0.5 okay so put in uh, negative 0.5 make sure you can get those decimals okay so you get about 0.61 or something so it's a little bit higher. Okay, e to the 0 equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that point right there. e to the 0. 0.5 is about 1.6. Okay, 1.65. So uh, so here's 0. 0.5. And so here's um, 1 point, I don't know, right about there. Maybe a little bit lower, but I don't know. Anyway, so um, e to the 1 is that 2.718. Okay, so we're just going to keep graphing e to the 1.5. Can you see this exponential graph? The reason why it's going up in that direction is because e is a number greater than 1. Sorry. Hey, no problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, there's our graph right there, f of x equals e to the x. Now this is an exponential growth function because uh, e is, is a number greater than 1. Okay, if it was a number less than 1, some decimal or fraction, but it's greater than 0, then it would be a decay function. That was yesterday's lesson. But they all graph the same, you guys. So we use the same trick uh, to do in the last lesson. We, um, we just test 0, 1, and then that uh, graph those points, and that gives you the direction. And it asymptotically goes towards the x-axis. Unless we got the hk. So the hk, it'll asymptotically go to the k part right there. Okay, so we move the origin to hk, which is opposite same, and then graph uh, the parent graph right there without HK just like we did before okay so let's graph these guys and state uh, the domain and range and set notation okay 
All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So we get, um, uh, um, we're going to first move uh, to the left one up four. This is my third attempt on this. That's why I got to, um, because I keep getting interruptions this morning. That was, we're doing a survey, and our principal came in and brought a bunch of computers in. So, so to the left one up four. Now we're going to pretend like this is our origin, okay? And so this is a horizontal line, y equals four. The vertical lines are x equals a number. Here it's x equals negative one. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and graph y equals three to the e to the x without the h, k, because we compensated for it with this uh, moving the origin right there. Okay, so let's plug in zero right here. Three times e to the zero is three times one, which is three. So we go 0 up 3, okay? And then we're going to go e to the 1. <clears throat> so we'll plug in 1 right there. So it's going to be 3 times e. Well, 3 times 2.7 is going to, or 2.718 is going to be about 8.2 right there. So we're going to go over 1 from here and up about a little bit more than 8 right there. Okay, now that's not really 8 right there. We're going to go ahead and get the real order. Now we got the graph. So this graph is going to go down like this, asymptotically towards this asymptote right there. Okay, let's put the real points in there. So this is at uh, negative 1, 7, and this is at 0, and then just plug in 0 back up here. So 0 plus 1 is um, uh, 1, so e to the 1, so this would be 3e plus 4. That would be this one. So this would be 0, 3e plus 4. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph that. There's our graph, and then our <coughs> state, our domain, and range. It goes left and right forever. It's everything above uh, 4, so our range would be y is uh, greater than 4. If it said, what's our end behavior? As we go to the left, as x goes to negative infinity, this graph is going y would go to 4. As x goes to positive infinity, it goes to positive infinity. Okay, all right, let's try this one. So negative 0.5e to the x minus 2. Okay, now notice these are going by every 2 is 1. So that would be 0.5. That's 1. That's 1.5. Similarly, that's negative 0.5, negative 1. Okay, and we're doing that because of that right there. All right, let's move the origin right to down 1. Okay, now we can graph without the 2 and the 1 for a moment and pretend that that's the origin, and we'll do 0 right here. E to the 0 is 1. 0.5 times 1 is 0.5. So we'll go 0 down a half right there. Okay, <clears throat> and then let's plug in do, do, let's plug in 1 right here. So 0.5 times E to the 1 is 0.5 times E, which is about... 1.4. So when we go over 1, it's going to go down. There's 1. Point, uh, uh, it's going to go down 1.4. So down right about uh, uh, there. Okay. So when we go over 1, it goes down 1. There's 0.5. So 0.4 is like right about there. Okay. All right. Now how do we get these points? Okay. So this one's easy right there. This is uh, over 2, down 1.5. And then this one right here, how we got this one, well, we can get the over 3 part. That's what this is right there. And then we plug 3 back up here. Okay, so 3 minus 2 is 1, so it's e to the 1, so it's 0.5e uh, e to the 1, which is e minus 1. That's how we get the y coordinate right there. Okay, so when we graph those guys, there's our domain and range. Okay, all right, and then that's going to be the end. So if you're in my class, that'll be your assignment. You have uh, four problems right there. Take care.